Speaker. Madam Speaker, Budget 2008 contains some good elements, a few bad omissions, but most importantly, New Zealand First is promising is something better. Moving tax thresholds in October this year will provide relief for New Zealand workers and New Zealand First will support these initiatives. But we'd make this point. Much of the good in this budget is found in the fine print and a lot of it flows on from New Zealand First Conference Supply Agreement with the government. Our gains, New Zealand First gains, include assistance to supernewtons, free off-peak travel on public transport during the day and not at night, as TVNZ said, for super gold card holders. Subsidies for hearing aids of $500 or more. Advantageous tax effects for those receiving NZ Super. Increased funding for Māori wardens. Ongoing funding boost for elder care, the elder care sector, and more could have happened here. A significant injection to the shipping industry, rediscovered at last as being important for New Zealand. We've been saying that for years. Here comes climate change and all of a sudden, well, there's nothing so true as the saying, we told you so, but we damn well did, and for a long, long time. A uh, lift, well, at better late than never. A lift for Premier Racing Stakes. And, uh, lady, uh, Madam Speaker, if you add in the substantial budget boost for foreign affairs, which will ensure that this country, for the first time for a long time, has the resources to confront the great challenges of the 21st century of diplomacy and trade, you can see New Zealand First has delivered again. And I want to say this warning. I was just told by a National Party member that they don't expect to get it. Foreign Affairs doesn't expect to get it. They can be only the people that have talked to him and are foolish enough to think the National is going to win the next election. <laughs> because they are going to get it and they're getting it now. But there are other critical elements missing. For example, we're disappointed the budget does not include tax policies to promote export growth. Yes, subsidies, incentives, the kind of which you will see in Ireland, that you'll see in Singapore, you will see them in Japan, you will see them in, in Thailand, you'll see them throughout the Nordic countries, and you even see them in countries that used to be in the, behind the Iron Curtain. They do work. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. We need to learn what an export-dependent de economy needs by way of critical policy. We are an export-dependent economy and our policy should reflect that. Nor has the government or its predecessor, nor has the government or its predecessor addressed the elephant in the room, the Reserve Bank Act, so loved by so many people in this parliament. This is a failed economic experiment. It is inflation targeting. There is some belief in this parliament that somehow we can deal to massive imported inflation by damaging our domestic markets and our domestic consumers. Targeted import inflation using the blunt instrument of domestic interest rates can only create domestic pain, and it is. And we heard nothing from Mr Key today about that. We've been saying this for 20 years. And only if we get back on track as an exporting nation can we grow our economy so we can afford a decent wages and social service and social services. Uh, we think there is a program with respect to affordability and the rapid rising prices of household basics, but it's still insufficient. Let's face it, times are tough, and a lot of people are finding it hard to make ends meet. But we have some questions for the National Party. Will they cut New Zealand's superannuation? Yes. Yes. And the $45 windfall for married couples from this October? Yes. Give us an answer. Oh, <laughs> I'm not taking it from Nick Smith. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Will they torpedo Kiwi Sabre? Will they cut the thousand extra police that we're putting on the streets? Will they slash extra funding for the elder care sector? Will they take hearing aids off the elderly? Will they take away their free transport? Will they make them pay more to go to a doctor? Yes. Now, we could go on, but unlike National, New Zealand First has a solution. We are actually able to offer a real alternative with real policies which are tried and tested in nearly every other growing economy. We want to see a tax threshold, free threshold of 5 
$1,200 introduced. A tax cut that everybody, everybody benefits from. We also want GST reduced to 10 percent across the board. What was most noticed about the theatre of Parliament today was there in Parliament was Roger Douglas and Richard Preble alongside National, indicating their support. Remember them? They said that GST at 10 per cent was written in stone, could not be changed. Then they changed it to 12.5 per cent and have never explained why. Those two steps I've outlined are not enough on their own. We want 68 per cent of the net average wage for supernutants, and we could afford it. So while we support this budget, we're looking forward with a real alternative of tax relief and greater affordability in budget 2009. And we mean to be here. And if you're following the polls, you know we're going to be here, just in case some people have got some silly ideas. <laughs> we know that with a package of tax incentives for exporters and a rewrite of the Reserve Bank Act and a more equitable tax policy, we can put New Zealand's economy and its people back on the front foot. We are not going to go on with the Governor of the Reserve Bank unelected doing what he likes to the major part of the economy while those of us who are elected can do, because of our own legislative frustration, nothing. We offer an alternative. They don't. They don't. An old National Party would have, Holyoke would have, people like Holland would have, but not this crowd. It can only come, growth can only come through productive and non-consumptive wealth. Never has this been more urgent. There were no solutions for the National Party today. I was amazed he got to the last five minutes, Mr. Key, and he said, now to National's plan. <laughs> Just two questions. How much and when? Come on, Mr. Smith, tell us now. Oh, he'll tell you on election campaign. Oh, he'll tell us on election campaign. He doesn't know. 